Hi, I'm Harry Gregson Williams, and I'm the composer for Gladiator 2. I spoke to Hans, that was the first call I made after Ridley asked me to do the movie, and um, uh, yeah, he, he, Hans was really supportive and said, uh, you know, go nail it, and uh, make me proud. The <clears throat> main character, Lucius, is very, uh, very intriguing, and obviously he's the central character in this movie, but some of the peripheral characters, Denzel Washington's uh, character, uh, Macronus, um, was most unexpected when I read the script. And I, uh, I was really excited to, to write music around his scenes. Um, yeah, Riddy is usually quite an open book when it comes to music. He doesn't send me down a path and, and uh, allows me some freedom to experiment. So that's what we did. Riddy's very encouraging. He speaks to me in a specific sort of language. He's not speaking to me in musical terms, but his movies are like pieces of artwork. Uh, I mean, if you freeze frame any Ridley Scott movie anywhere, pretty much, there's this beautiful image. Um, so he, visually, he knows exactly what he's doing. So with music, he knows uh, what the power of music can be and how much it can contribute to the experience of watching the movie. He's an artist, first of all, personally enjoys painting. Uh, so he'll talk to me about light and darkness, shade, texture, and those are all words that we use in music. I've had a great time scoring this movie. I never dreamt that I would have an opportunity to do a gladiator. Um, uh, and I've worked a lot with Ridley Scott um, he did warn me this was coming down the pipe, uh, um, but it's been great fun. The naval battle was a, a hell of a lot of fun to write for, um, and the very end of the movie is the climax of the movie, big and bold and brassy. My name is Arthur Max. I'm the production designer on Gladiator 2. You know, I've been working with a really long time, so there's not a, a lot of long-winded discussions. It's like uh, pretty shorthand. And what he said to me, I think, which was most significant, was we're going to go for scale on this one, which uh, I took to mean we're going to build everything bigger uh, than we had done in the first place, which was very big to start with. I think we went um, to the original sources that we used on the first movie for color and palette, uh, which was mostly um, 19th century orientalist painters. We did an aerial drone topographical survey of the site, which we were never able to do before. So we built a, a physical model of the topography of uh, the Rome uh, site in 3D, and then um, started to populate it with buildings in miniature and um, tried to do a layout. And from that layout, we did plans, um, architectural scale drawings, which we then um, used to develop concept art. Ridley, I mean, his uh, whole approach to uh, the art form, I mean, he's uh, involved in every phase every department, uh, uh, yet it, it, he's a collaborator. So um, he's kept up to date with all the technologies as it's evolved. Uh, he's a stylist, he's a visualist. He has a background in, in fine art. He was a production designer himself. So you can't get away with anything. He knows all of our tricks. The origins are still intact. And some of the characters come back, you know, and the, and the, the spaces are familiar. The scale has grown, though, quite, quite a lot. Um, it's sort of like Gladiator on steroids in terms of scale. Because we want to do the naval battle, the Colosseum uh, theatrical battle in it, um, we were going to fill it with water. So in that sense, we raised up the foundation about five feet, about a meter and a half, to accommodate the, the water level. 
so that we could still see what we wanted to see above the waterline when we flooded it, as well as in the, um, the actual tank where we built a partial re reconstruction of the Colosseum uh, Empress box and some tiered seating either side. Um, so that would be appropriately above the water level. And we also enlarged the entry arch from the original so we could bring the ships in through the gates. It was a great giant puzzle, which is another of uh, Ridley's favorite games, is to um, puzzle you know, the, the movie together from various diverse locations and you know, within those locations, various um, spaces and chambers and, and combine them in you know, very clever and cunning ways. My name is Joan T. Yates. I'm the civilian costume designer on Gladiator 2, directed by Sir Ridley Scott. Oh, it's so exciting. It was glorious to do because it's the most wonderful period uh, to fashion concept, really. Um, and so we had some great ideas for this new one. And it's a marvellous era to work in. And you can fit all sorts under a tunic and a toga. I certainly did a lot of new research. The original scripts had periods in Egypt, um, in um, Carthage, um, and there was even Babylon. You know, and so it was a lot of a lot of new research. There's nothing better than just walking through Rome. And of course, we rent a lot from the wonderful Roman uh, costume houses because they have the original costumes from all the Ben Hurs and the you know just beautiful embroidery. Can't get that done easily now. Um, and so you just wander through Rome, and Trajan's column tells you nearly everything you need to know on uh, military. That's for sure. When we started creating for Denzel Washington. Ridley was very inspired by the Orientalist painters of the 19th century, the Moorish influence um, that came with the Orientalists. And so we did a sort of split, split Roman, because as Denzel said, he didn't want to be different when he was trying to ingratiate himself with the emperors. Um, so he started off more Moorish, as it were. The emperors, they were a joy to do. I mean, so wonderful to do these young boys. They're both in their 20s. They're both completely mad and they have red hair. And we were just, you know, we were out and we were just dressing them out there, like as out, as far out as we could go, but using fabulous fabrics, using lots of embroidery, using just wonderful gold on gold, silver on silver, ancient embroidery, the ancient, not saris, but ancient Indian embroideries. It's just sensational, just wonderful. From the research down to the um, making, and then, of course, fitting, that's always quite nerve-wracking, and you're not quite sure if you're going down the right route, and then showing Ridley, and then actually seeing them on, on set, it's all quite, quite nerve-wracking, the whole thing, always quite nerve-wracking, but so satisfying at the end, so satisfying. Now, I think the ones that are behind me, I love. Two of Denzel Washington's, who plays Macronus, and two of Connie Nielsen's, who plays Lucilla. And uh, basically, I just love them. I love all of them, to be honest. I love all my emperors as well. My name is Neil Corbold. I'm the special effects supervisor, and the movie I'm working on is Gladiator 2. I've worked with Ridley quite, on quite a few movies. It's probably eight or nine movies since Gladiator. So uh, I sort of know the way he's, his brain works to a certain extent. So, you know, and I know what his, his, uh, what his standards are and, and the quality of work that he wants. 
So, you know, I, from, from all those experiences I've had with him, I have a pretty good idea of, of what, he's, what he's looking for. You know, I did a lot of research on the first one and, and I was lucky enough that I kept a lot of the research material it's on, on a bookshelf in my office. So I just dusted them off and started looking through them. And then when, when I was going through my, my, um, my reference stuff, I found some old storyboards, which were of the rhino fire. And that day I was going up to see Ridley at, our, at, at uh, Scott Free in London. And I thought I'll just take them up as a, just to remind him what we didn't shoot on the first one. And at the end of the meeting, I said, oh, I've got something to show you. And I showed him these pictures of the rhino. He says, I want to do that this time now. <laughs> so that was, quite, uh, that was quite funny. One of the things that Ridley threw at me on this is he, he wanted to do the opening battle in, um, in, uh, in Morocco. And Ridley said, I want these boats, I want these two 150-foot-long uh, Roman galleons going towards uh, to going towards the wall, it's going to, it's going to see, you know, do a siege uh, 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 battle on, on the on the on the wall, and but there's no water there. So, uh, it, but that for me is is you know it gets the juices flowing and the brain ticking over, and I managed to find these uh, fantastic uh, plant movers from from Spain, which are these like twenty axle, all rotating. Um, bases that move like oil rigs around and they all bolt together and you know I, I went into him with the concept and showed him what what we could do because normally you just stick them on a track and you could just go on one plane you just go in and out but with these you could go anywhere you like so you could set the shot up you know how he wanted to do it and not be tied into where the ships were so, which was quite amazing. Ridley wanted the rhino fight that he wanted in the first one but never got. So uh, that was interesting. And that was a collaboration between myself and Connor O'Sullivan, the prosthetics uh, supervisor. So we built a mechanical base uh, uh, and also a mechanical, we did the mechanics for the Rhino. We had a certain amount of rehearsal, but a lot of it was just made up on the day. Um, and, and we were practicing as we were shooting. So. Uh, that, it was, that was quite an amazing uh, few days. You know, I always like that when the visual effects supervisor embraces special effects. It's better for the actors, it's better for Ridley, if something's there. And, you know, a lot of the time it, we, we use the, the practical effects that we've done and, and visual effects enhance them. You know, the sheer scale for, you know, you know Ridley doesn't like using blue screens too much and, and he'll shoot into an area where there's, there's things, of trucks in the way or whatever, but you know, Mark's great to where he would just work around it. I think there's a couple of sequences that I'm really excited to see, and that's the opening battle uh, with, the, with the Roman warships coming in to the siege uh, and, and the Colosseum uh, battle, naval battle as well. There's, and there's the Rhino battle as well, and then there's a baboon battle, so there's quite a few there's quite a few scenes that I'm really looking forward to seeing. I would like audience to look at Gladiator 2 and, and, and be taken on another journey like the first one took them on a journey and, and enjoy it, embrace it as, as they did the first one. My name is Michael Pross and I'm one of the producers on Gladiator. Within the film we have what I call a great powerful uh, revenge engine but this film also brings in a lot of layers of Rome that we didn't see in the first film. It adds to them the Senate, what is happening in Rome, the politics. In this film, you'll see Rome is a very different place than it was in the first film. So we've added dimension uh, to that, and I think with, with great effect, and there is nobody better to dramatize these scenes than, than Ridley. We've also added characters that are surprising here. We have uh, Macrinus, played by the great Denzel Washington, who brings uh, a unique sense of mystery and intrigue and defiance to Rome. We've also come back uh, to great characters from the original film, Lucilla, played by the legendary Connie Nielsen, an absolute 
honor to be working with her and these things are beautifully tied together from film one to our, our current picture. Acacius played beautifully by Pedro Pascal um, is I would say one of the most complicated characters uh, in the film with very very different agendas um, and somebody who emotionally um, has to give so much of himself to different people to hold not just his family together but also the stability of Rome. Fred Heshinger and Joe Quinn uh, who play uh, Emperor Caracalla and Emperor Gator are what I would call both uh, intuitive actors and they work really well individually and they work really well together. Paul Mescal uh, is not just one of the best young working actors in the world right now, he's also one of the nicest men. I think immediately when Ridley uh, and all of the filmmaking team met Paul, uh, we realized there was just something extraordinary about him. This movie is huge and it is epic and it could only have been pulled off by a director like Ridley Scott. There is no better director working uh, for this genre, this spectacle, this level of epic quality than Ridley Scott. I was awed by the size, the scope of what Ridley and the filmmaking team uh, had pulled off, uh, Arthur Max, obviously, uh, our extraordinary production designer. And it's overwhelming, but in the best way. And that is the beauty of cinema. It's the magic of what we do. And uh, frankly, you know, it's one of the most exhilarating uh, experiences of life. I think audiences are going to absolutely uh, be blown away by what they see in the Colosseum. Flooding boats, archers, arrows, and maybe something even more disturbing going on in the water. Gladiator is a huge cinematic experience for audiences. This is a film that you can watch and enjoy um, on its own terms and on its own merits. The scale of the filmmaking, the epic themes, the incredible battle sequences, this is what cinema is about. It felt kind of like a dream to be back in Malta and having just that fact that we just rebuilt the Roman arena. And um, it was only five years ago that we really thought we had an idea that was strong. And uh, we went to work on that seriously. And um, it evolved. Once Paul started the movie, we continued to be amazed. And his instincts for what's true in the scene are remarkable for a young man. And um, he, he became, uh, as a great actor is, the kind of custodian of his character, Lucius. And he protected Lucius, and we all learned to trust his gut. A fantasy was always Denzel Washington, who Ridley had worked with previously. So um, we got lucky. Denzel liked the character. Uh, while he was considering it, Ridley sent him drawings of some of the wardrobe of the character to give him a little sense of the world. And, um, and he, he jumped in. Lucilla was a critical character for the movie. She's continuity with the first one. She's our connection to Maximus, to her father, Marcus Aurelius. And we imagined the heart of the movie, as always, as a mother-son story. Um, Connie was great in the first movie. She made a real impression on a generation of young women who were always writing to her, considered her kind of a, an activist in Rome. And um, so we went to her very early on. One of the real questions for us is, why is this young character, Lucius, going to be so formidable in the arena? With Lucius, we set up that he had a troubled background. He had been lost in Numidia, separated from his family, 
on the run so he could be fierce. The best explanation for his success in the arena was his rage. And Macronus prides himself on his ability to pick gladiators. And what he articulates in the movie is he looks for a rage, and a rage that will both fuel this gladiator's wins, but also speak to people in the arena. They'll see his fierceness and they'll relate to it. From the beginning, as we started to talk about Lucius, the only kid in the first movie, as the likely protagonist for a sequel, we knew he was Lucilla's son. That makes him the grandson of Marcus Aurelius. And as we started to talk about his parentage, I mean, the spiritual father of the first movie is obviously Maximus. So everyone was interested in the idea that Lucius would discover that he's actually Maximus's son. And instead of some hack politician, which is what he feared, he would find out that he was connected to a hero and uh, uh, a man of, of, of a higher calling, which is what Lucius will slowly become himself. I think in terms of spectacle, the, um, the naval battle in the arena may be the most mind-blowing. And, um, and also there's some very exciting story elements in it. But the combination of the naval battle, uh, Lucius firing an arrow from the ship at Acacius in the stands, soldiers, gladiators falling into the water, attacked by sharks, that's a lot. So that will really be fun to watch with an audience. I'm Lucy Fisher, and I'm a producer on Gladiator 2. It took a very long time to get a story that we thought would be worthy of being um, a sequel or following Gladiator. I think there was a lot of trepidation about trying to um, figure out a path forward that would be equal to uh, the emotionality and the action and everything else of the first one. And we uh, finally came up with an idea that we thought was a worthy sequel idea. We knew it was going to start Lucius because he was a, was alive because <laughs> he was alive, and because uh, he would be the right age now to be the hero of the movie. You see a very conniving guy, and luckily, with the actor that we have, lucky enough to have Denzel Washington, he brings such dimension and such personality to this guy that, as much as you may want to hate him, you never quite can because he's so charming and funny and. Um, charismatic. The first day he shot, uh, he didn't speak. He just, he, it, there were just reaction shots of him. And it's where you kind of know somebody is really a movie star. He didn't speak and yet you couldn't take your eyes off of him. So that's Denzel Washington is he doesn't even have to talk and you're riveted. He has, you know, en enormous screen presence and he has the sensitivity and the vulnerability, but what we were really curious to see is would he have the fighting spirit to be a gladiator too? And the more we talked to him, the, the, the deeper we fell in love with the idea of him playing that character. And obviously when Ridley met him, he felt exactly the same way, which was we didn't, we really didn't have to look further. The scale of the movie was so massive, it wasn't like anything we'd ever seen before, even like even in terms of comparing it to the first movie, just the amount of people involved. I asked how many tents we had for hair and makeup in Morocco, and the number was 80. Huge tents just to do the, the extras hair and makeup. So I have only two words for how we did everything, and it is how we did everything, and those two words are Ridley Scott. Is exactly why you want to go to the movies. You want to be transported and you want to be taken to another time and place that you could never go to in real life any other way. And this is like a passport to another world, and there's no way not to lose yourself in this movie because it's so big and it's so massive and it's so all-encompassing.